Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I am Subhash Chandra. In this video, we are going to discuss about pipe supports. But do you know what are we going to discuss about in the pipe supports? Is most design engineers do not know or they are not confident about it. Yes, this is what we are going to discuss about in this video because being a design engineer, it is really really important for you to be very specific in your design. If you are not specific, we can't call you as a design engineer. So that's what I'm trying to help you. So without wasting your time, let's get started. So the point number one, can we change the length of the shoe support given in the pipe support standard? If you look at any standard across the world, the length of shoe supports given in the standard would be 300 mm. Do you know whether you can reduce or increase this length? The answer is yes, but here you have to understand how much and based on what factor. So the first thing, how to reduce it and how much you can reduce it. Here you have to understand the length of shoe supports are uh, designed based on various factors. One of the very important factors is that thermodynamic expansion of the piping. If the pipe tend to move from one point to another point during thermal expansion, Pipe support has to ensure that the pipe still remains over the structural beam. If the length of the shoe support is less, it will slip away from the beam and it will create a lot of sagging. So this is one of the key points and there are many other factors involved in it. So what you have to understand is that if you want to reduce, you can reduce it. But do not reduce more than one fifth of the standard dimension given in the table. Say for an example. If the length of the shoe support is 300, don't reduce it more than 250 mm. That's not safe actually. But at the same time, if you want to increase it, how much you have to increase it? For that, you have to understand this. Increasing the material directly increases your project cost. If the number of supports are less, that's fine. But if the number of supports are most, you have to take a call. I would advise take an individual call based on the scenarios actually. Do not generalize by increasing the support actually because increasing any material or any shoe length will increase your project cost. So the answer to my question is that you can reduce it but don't go more than one fifth of the actual length and you can increase it but please consider the cost factor. Now let's move on to the point number two. The point number two is why are we using Trunian pipe support in the piping design? Why can't we? replace the Trunian support with any other support. Before going to the answer, you have to understand something called optimization. In any project, we happen to buy many different sizes of pipes. And during construction, you will find lots of pieces of pipes are wasted. So in order to optimize this wastage, you can replace that waste material in terms of Trunian supports. You can use that waste material as a Trunian support. This is one of the key factor why Trunian supports are used. You don't have to buy any other material other than pipe. You are already buying these materials. So why can't we use the materials which are going to be waste? So this is one of the important reason. And the second important reason is that if you are going to buy any other material, it is going to be a structure. So again, the structural cost is going to increase. So this will increase the project cost also. And third important factor is that Trunian supports are more dynamic supports which will have more coverage than any other support. If you are going to provide the structural support, it is only going to uh, have a small point of contact over the pipe. But in place of Trunian support, it is going to have a bigger area of a coverage and the contact point with the support and the pipe will be more than the structure and the pipe. This is an another factor. So, it is really, really economical to use the Trunian support. You can always replace the Trunian support with any other support, but that option may not be economical. Your cost of the project will increase. That's one of the reasons why the Trunian supports are used generally in pipe design. Now let's go to the point number three. The point number three is, what type of supports are we using in the pump, suction, nozzle and why? So the answer to this question is that we are using adjustable supports. The reason is 
the answer to the why the answer to the why is generally pump suctions or pump discharge pump nozzles are considered to be very delicate because any change or any increase in load over the nozzle of this pump will disturb the integrity of the pump and point number 2 is during construction you cannot ensure that your pump center line elevation will be fixed at this particular elevation there will be some minor constructional error but we cannot have this error completely running throughout the year because this will slowly generate some sort of a misalignment between the pump suction and the discharge while the pump is under operation it will disturb the internal bearings and it will cause a lot of wear and tear and it will increase the fatigue in the piping actually i mean fatigue in the pump so it is really really important for the pump to be free out of all this frictional forces additional loads and misalignments this is one of the reason why adjustable supports are provided as a first support at the pump suction because once after the installation of the pump we can always adjust the elevation of the piping according to the pump nozzle if you are not going to provide the adjustable supports you will have this misalignment and generally there will be some loads which are which will be transferred to the pump nozzle without your knowledge but in place of adjustable support you can fine tune this adjustments in such a way that there will not be any loads transferred to the pump suction this is the very important point why we are using the adjustable support now let's move on to the fourth point the fourth point is can we provide support below the valves because you can see that valves are a dead weight items the weight of the valve is more than any other item in the piping if you take flanges if you take instruments if you take bolt weight of the valve is incomparable which is actually always more than the any other items in the piping so can i directly go and put a support below the valve is it okay for this you have to understand the dynamics basically what happens if you are going to provide a support below the valve the valve will be stationary and the load of the piping will act on the flanges of the valve which will cause a huge fatigue which will cause a huge uh, the stress over the valve body actually so what happens if the valve cracks then it's a huge loss right because the cost of the valve is more than any other part of the piping so that's one of the reason why it is not recommended this is a point number one and the point number two is that the bottom profile of the valve is not suitable for supporting it is actually will not have such a kind of a perfection where you can provide a support so it is advisable to provide support over the piping so that the piping will remain flexible there will not be any additional loads over the valve but if you are going to provide a support at the bottom of the valve then the valve has to experience difference in load from either side that is not good for the body of the valve so this is the key reason for why we are not providing support right below the valve now let's move on to the fifth point the fifth point is can i increase the pipe span length more than the pipe span length given in the standards of the pipe supports so the point is very clear can i provide support which has a span more than the span length of the standard tables which are available in the standards for this the simple answer is yes but how much you can increase that's a key over here for this you have to understand in every calculation there will be something known as factor of safety that factor of safety in piping design is 1.5 times which indicates that your design can go 50% more than the actual but this is actually required to make sure your design is safer you cannot use the full range so my advice is that you can go of around 1/5 of the actual span length more than the i mean 1/5 of span length you can increase it more than the actual span length do not go more than that and moreover this case should be very unique in your design say for an example you should not repeat this everywhere do not use for all of the supports in order to reduce the number of supports because if you are going to use this figure everywhere your design will be at the border of the safe margin you will not have any margin it is always advisable to have the safe margin more because in case of any disturbance in the piping system due to any sort of valve burst or something actually 
your piping system will be protected based on the safe margin. So my advice is that do not increase the pipe span more than one fifth of the actual span length provided in the standard. So this is it guys actually. These are the five points which most design engineers do not aware or they are not confident about. It. I hope that this will help you to understand what are that specific thing that you have to focus in the pipe support actually. I will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from Subhash Chandran. Thank you so much for watching my video and thank you for your support.